And now um, we'll move on to Arnout Vanderwey. Uh, Arnout is uh, coming uh, up from uh, Stony Brook uh, University and uh, uh, is a professor in uh, sociology. And uh, his work is focused on the emergent or macro level consequences uh, of micro level uh, uh, processes of network formation. And he's done some lovely work in that domain. Uh, and uh, his work uh, more recently, and I think we'll be hearing a bit about this, is about social processes of cumulative advantage. That is, how are there uh, reinforcing processes where success begets success or lack of success begets lack of uh, success? Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to have Aaron here. Thank you. Thank you, David. So I'll be reporting on a, a number of experiments that I recently conducted. And uh, I'd like to start by giving credit to uh, individuals who uh, also partook in this. Um, Sue Mung Kang, Michael Restivo, Akshay Patil, um, and Idil Akin, Jui Tiagi, Fernanda Page, Gabriela Gonzalez, and Juan Mo. So the conjecture that we are concerned with is that of success breeds success. <laughs> <coughs> and the idea really is that um, a, pr a success that occurs in the present has a positive impact on the likelihood of receiving a success in the future. So an individual incurs a success or a group incurs a success and that raises that likelihood of another success. Now, this is an old idea, and there's a large number of literatures that kind of converge on this idea that rec <coughs> recently have started talking to one another more than they did so in the past. There are generative models. People have tried to explain why uh, there, uh, there are a lot of empirical frequency distributions that have a particular shape, and a success breeds success uh, model often, um, you know, different kinds of success breeds success models give rise to those distributional features. In sociology, people are concerned with um, inequality and whether it's fair or unfair and the existence of a success breeds success dynamic, which they call cumulative advantage, um, you know, poses a problem because it uh, gives rise to the possibility that individuals, because of an earlier success, are more successful not because of the merit um, that should underlie it. And in network science, uh, there's this idea of prefer preferential attachment, whereby nodes uh, accumulate um, links at an increasing uh, pace because of with each uh, link, the likelihood of another link coming in. Uh, is increased. So we've got a very large body of literature, a very, it's thought to be a very gen general mechanism, um, and yet the evidence is problematic, mostly because uh, it's observational and it suffers from major problems of confounding. <clears throat> uh, here are two very common telltale signs um, of success breeds success that individuals have, um, uh, have taken to indicate um, success breeds success. So we could observe that most of us have little success and that a few of it have a ton of it. And one diagnosis could be that is because that select number of individuals got some uh, lucky success early on and that um, there was feedback operating on that and that led to a self-reinforcing process. And so the success kept accumulating, whereas for the majority of us, uh, no such thing happened and a success never happened. Or the second diagnosis is that um, there's something special about those few very successful individuals, and that is that they have some form of privilege that is either observed or unobserved, um, hard to pinpoint, but somehow they have networks or talents or uh, qualities um, that differentiate them from the vast majority of non-winners. Second telltale sign that is often taken uh, as an indicator of um, cumulative advantage, success breeds success, is that on a dynamic signature where we can look over time, a time series, and we see some form of acceleration happen or something more complicated pattern of some sort. And then the diagnosis, again, could be that success breeds success, that each individual uh, gold coin there produces an increase in the likelihood of another gold coin happening. Uh, but again, the diagnosis could also be that there is some unobserved temporal process, say aging or um, the life course, learning, careers, that increases that rate over time. So whether that is exogenous or endogenous, is hard to tell. Um, and there are variations on this kind of evidence. Um, in each case, there are these, um, you know, these core problems of confounding that are hard to overcome. Now, there have been uh, several experimental studies. Um, and indeed, uh, some of these are uh, you know, have very clever designs. And they were able to randomize and somehow get rid of these confounding problems. If we look at the large body of literature on this topic, we have a um, we have a, an, an idea that of success breeds success being a very a general phenomenon, um, <clears throat> but the evidence um, that is compelling is limited to a number of uh, experimental studies. And so really the purpose of 
our effort here is to increase, to, to really uh, make some, break some ground and uh, make some progress in terms of uh, con convincingly demonstrate the existence of positive feedback in these uh, systems of success, very generally conceived. And we come at this uh, with a very specific research question. And we ask, is it in general the case that if one were to bestow a success upon an individual arbitrarily in the present, uh, would that increase the likelihood of that individual or group uh, receiving a success in the future? So, quote unquote, could one breed success this way? And that is exactly the experimental design to which this gives rise. So it's a very generic uh, experimental design. You can imagine a population of individuals who are at risk of receiving a success. A researcher performs a random assignment and um, individuals in the experimental condition are given a success, whatever form it is. In the control condition, they are being, uh, that success is withheld from them. And of what we're interested in is seeing if in the experimental condition, there is a greater propensity for successes to accumulate uh, to those recipients of those successes. And because of the random assignment, uh, there are populations in the experimental condition, the control condition, uh, are of equal risk um, if there were no success breed success effect of accumulating successes. So any difference that we observe must be because of the treatment. Right. So this is where the leverage uh, comes in. So we have a, a, a wide range of uh, instances where we can apply this design. So for example, on Wikipedia, uh, because this is open uh, source, we can uh, give an editing award to a random editor and count subsequent awards given by the third parties. I will give more details on these particular contexts in a minute. In change.org, a, a, a site where individuals petition um, signature campaigns, uh, we can add signatures to a petition and see if that increases the rate of subsequent petitions and signatures. And on kickstarter.com, we can donate a small amount of money to a random project. Kickstarter is where people seek uh, money for uh, projects of their own have a goal amount, and we can see if this spurs uh, the rate of donations to that particular project. All right, so let's zoom in on these applications in some detail. <clears throat> if you are a, a regular consumer of Wikipedia, you might have never seen a user page like this. Um, but we have a, um, a pseudonym, Quinxorin. This is an uh, anonymous editor of Wikipedia um, and has a page of its own. And we see listed our barn stars. These are editing awards that... Um, other editors of Wikipedia who also produce that content um, for, that Wiki for that encyclopedia that you and I use, <clears throat> uh, those individuals uh, can give those barn stars to the focal individual. And there are different kinds of barn stars, the tireless contributor barn star, the creator of the barn star, barn star, and the Kansas barn star. And in each case, we see a thank you message of some sort accompanying the barn star. Um, on screenshot of uh, change.org, so we, uh, we can have... Uh, petitions. Here's a petition where uh, the Pachog Medford School District Board of Education uh, is asked to sign a petition to keep the Suffolk transportation in place. Uh, on the top right, we see um, that there's eight supporters so far of this petition, eight individuals who have signed the petition. Um, and so you can see uh, how much support a petition has had so far. Um, and on kickstarter.com, um, a popular crowdfunding website uh, people raise money for a particular kind of project. So in this case, this is clothing for a biker, a new biker clothing, and uh, the, there's a goal amount of $27,000. 11,866 is the number of dollars that has so far been raised. There are eight days to go before um, the goal has to be reached for um, the money to be given. And 65 individuals have coughed up that, coughed up that money, that $11,000. <coughs> And there's a button, of course, back this project where you can donate and uh, add your contribution. Right. So really, we have these three applications of the same experimental design, and it covers um, significant ground in terms of uh, the kinds of fields where success breeds success uh, could be taking place. So we have um, open source collaboration, we've got um, social movements, petitions, and uh, mobilization, and we've got Kickstarter.com uh, where the dynamics of fundraising are studied. So the first result I'm going to present is that we did indeed find that success bred success in each of these instances. So what you're looking at is the y-axis is the percentage of cases um, that, re that uh, had at least one more success. And um, the, the dark gray bar is experimental condition, uh, light is the control condition, 
and we find that in each case the uh, experimental condition uh, receives more success than the control condition, <coughs> and its uh, difference is statistically significant in each case. What is interesting to note also is that, in particular in the first two cases, the effect is quite strong. Um, if we th one thinks of the control condition as um, the natural number of successes or amount of success that a project um, would solicit, then um, we see that the bars are, at, are twice as, more than twice as high for funding and awards, suggesting that the amount of success that is generated through positive feedback, the, the, the minimal manipulation that we did, is at least as large as the, the general availability of quality in that pool of uh, candidate projects uh, was able to spur by itself. Um, so the fe these feedback effects are quite strong in these cases. <clears throat> well, speculation about why it's lower for signatures could be that um, there's more intrinsic um, motivation for um, signing particular petitions, um, but this is pure speculation at this point. The, uh, the takeaway is that in, e in each case a success breed success mechanism was observed. Now, it was not only the case that those numbers were higher, but that gap between the haves and have-nots kept growing over time as well. So what you're looking at here is a uh, standardized, um, the, the x-axis has time standardized, so um, zero is where the treatment was given, and one is where the observation uh, period ended. Y-axis is the average success, um, uh, which is funding in the blue condition, the experiment, in the uh, funding experiment. This is the number of awards in the yellow condition received by the uh, treatment in the control group, and the number of signatures is in red. And in each case, we have a solid line, which is the experimental condition, and a um, dashed line, which is the control condition. We see that the gap between uh, the um, projects in the experimental and the control condition keeps increasing with time. So we have a sense of uh, the split that emerges in the data between uh, uh, projects that were a priori identical in, in expectation. And a final result is uh, that the investment paid for itself. So in the case of cr uh, crowdfunding, what we have is a metric that allows us to measure the cost and the benefit of a treatment. So you can imagine that uh, the cost of a treatment is what we put into it. So we parted with actual money that was 1% to 10% of the funding goal. Um, and the benefit of the treatment can be measured by comparing um, the percentage raised in the treatment condition with the percentage raised in the control condition. And if we subtract that, the 23% from the 8%, we have a difference of 15%. So um, the average benefit exceeded the average cost. So that means that for every dollar you buy in terms of positive feedback, you get more than a dollar back. The final experiment, um, we looked at failure instead of success. <coughs> Here's a, screen sc a screenshot of Epinions. Epinions is a, project, a product review website. So what they have is products, for example, uh, those of you who have children, uh, here's the Ergo Baby. This is the baby carrier uh, that is very popular. Um, and what you see is a review here at the bottom. This is one of the many individuals who wrote a review for this article. I'd be lost without my Ergo. And this is rated to be a very helpful review. So you've got products. Products get reviews. And the reviews get rated by the community. And the ratings is what we're interested in here. <coughs> now, we didn't want to give uh, fake feedback. So we selected not helpful reviews only. So we have reviews um, that uh, we, as a team, assessed were not helpful. And then, on, uh, taking only those, we randomized them and decided to apply the, the treatment, which just the natural thing to do would be to, to rate that review as not helpful, or to withhold that rating in the control condition. And so here are the results. Um, Experiment control, it's the rows, columns are um, four types of ratings that other individuals after us could have given uh, these particular reviews, which are a priori um, equal in their not helpfulness. Uh, so not helpful and somewhat helpful occur at a higher rate in the experiment condition, and helpful and very helpful occur at a higher rate in the control condition, um, suggesting that there is indeed a um, negative a positive feedback in a negative sense, <coughs> whereby um, the chance of a negative rating increases with every negative rating that is being applied. So the conclusion then is that we have causal evidence here for success breeds success in a variety of substantive domains. Mobilization, where we have internet petitions, social status in collaborative projects, 
on the internet fundraising, where individuals um, uh, give money, and with every additional amount of money, uh, the likelihood of more money coming in is increased. Uh, and evaluation, um, whereby product reviews are, uh, <coughs> are rated by uh, third parties. And the strategic actors uh, can effectively invest in positive feedback is a conclusion that comes out of it because um, particularly in the fundraising uh, case, we find that the cost of doing so is outweighed by the benefit. Uh, and so there really is a market for uh, purchasing loans, positive reviews, endorsements, and the like. Um, now, there's not only this negative uh, effect, but you can imagine also that governments may use this <coughs> or um, uh, well-intended parties can use uh, this dynamic to jumpstart support to underappreciated projects through first mover loans. So if there are projects that are high in quality but perhaps they never got that first success, a government can st step in, provide funding, and take that funding out later knowing that both um, that the party will have benefited and it will not have costed anything. And with that I would like to thank you. Shells should be a standard feature then. A shell is somebody in an auction who bids uh, to raise it up, so you need probably a good idea to invest in some shells then. Perhaps. Was there a marked difference between funding one person and ten person? Like you said that sometimes you put in one person yeah. and sometimes ten person. Uh, yes, there there is a difference, um, but we're increasing the sample size to uh, uh, ho hopefully make that difference uh, bigger, yeah. So we have this the sample currently is too small to, uh, to find out, yeah. But that is, of course, an, an interesting direction because um, evidence currently suggests that there is a concavity um, in, in this feedback. So the more dollars you put in, the, the, the yield is actually going to um, could decrease, and that would suggest that maybe these, uh, these feedback effects, you know, dampen us in, in, some, in some sort of way. Yeah, that's a, a good question. Of course, we struggled with that. Uh, we, we have IB approval for all of these studies. The way that we, um, uh, we overcame it to some degree is that we, um, we only gave feedback that, um, that we believed we would, one would naturally give. So, for example, at the change.org, we signed petitions we supported. Uh, there were no neo-Nazi petitions that we signed. Um, on Kickstarter, on Kickstarter.com, we invested in projects that um, uh, that we did, had no problem investing in. And on Wikipedia, we selected editors who had, had actually done a lot of work for Wikipedia, so they were, they were part of the top one percent by productive effort. So we were giving. Yeah, so we selected randomly from among those top contributors. Yeah, there are some concerns of that sort. Um, one mechanism that you could, um, you could worry about is some kind of general ranking list. Um, on Wikipedia, this does not exist. On change.org, it does exist. And there we selected projects that were so far down that you could not reasonably, uh, they could not reasonably have any such effect. Um, um, and then on Kickstarter, um, uh, there is also no such list. The, there, there is a list that, um, that's, that presents the projects on a general page, but they are not ranked in order of popularity. Um, I, I have not studied those particular cases, but um, I, I believe that the experiments uh, suggest that such inflation is, is feasible.
questions that you should, you were not testing them. Right? You're testing what the perception of the outside world uh, and see whether or not these elements might actually be successful eventually. <coughs> so the second model could not have won anything in the way you designed the study. Am I completely confused here? So what is it inherently that the actors actually could do during your experiment to show that they were inherently good, rather than having a perception that grows into mm -hmm. you know, the way you explain it? Okay, so, okay, so you're talking about so there are two issues here. One is ex a fixed quality. So um, yes, there are good and bad projects. There are very productive and not productive editors. Um, by randomization, we get rid of the, we get two equal populations in terms of that. Um, now, in terms of endogenous quality, uh, yes, it is true. Um, it is true that in many cases that we could imagine, you know, quality could increase. People might uh, uh, do extra uh, work. On um, Kickstarter, there is just a video, and that video is fixed, um, and we're just waiting for money to come in. So there's nothing that can change. On um, change.org, we similarly have a, you know, a petition that is fixed. Wikipedia is a little different, because there you could see that it could be a motivational mechanism taking place. Indeed, I don't know how much time you have. I know we're short on time, but I would like to show you a graph here. So we, indeed, we do have a motivation an incentive effect here. So we have the status effect where there are more awards happening in the experimental instead of the control condition. But we also have more productivity, productivity happening and one could wonder whether perhaps at least part of that effect is, moderate, is mediated by increased effort on behalf of the recipients of the award who would in turn did more uh, work and that would have led them to uh, receive those awards. And um, what we did to disentangle those is not experimental but we tested among the 100 subjects in the treatment condition if those who received uh, additional barn stars were more productive in between, and that we find not to be the case. In fact, it's slightly in the opposite direction. Um, <clears throat> so, with, so that is suggestive of it not being mediated by productivity, um, for at least there to be a significant status component to this effect. Um,